once again. I am Mert Shane, pastor here at Kiyoki Chapel. And so welcome to worship. Uh, it is a pleasure always to have you with us. It is always a pleasure to be able to share in the good news that God has given us. So let us begin our worship today. Our call to worship is from Ephesians chapter 2. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him all of us have access in one spirit to the Father. Let us pray. O Christ, who commanded the apostles to go into the, all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature, let your name be great among the nations, from the rising up of the sun to its going down, now and forever. Amen. Our children's sermon today is, uh, we want to ask the children, do you ever go fishing? If you ever go fishing, what did you use to catch fish? Did you use a rod and reel? Did you use lures? Did you use bait? What did you use exactly to catch your fish? And how big of a fish did you catch? Well, we just gave uh, gift cards to our grandson so that they could buy fishing rods, so that they could go fishing and not have to borrow their instruments from their parents. Well, today's lesson, Jesus went and his first four disciples were fishermen. That's what they did for a living. And so he asked them to um, go fishing, except not in the normal fashion. When they fished, they didn't use rod and reel. They used nets that were weighted so that the net would go down into the water. And then when they pulled on it, it would collect fish in that net. And that's how they fished. In today's lesson, Jesus asked his disciples to fish, not for small fish, but for people. If they would go fish for people and tell the good news of God, that that would be sufficient. And so, this lesson is also for you to go fishing for people, to be God's disciples. And so, how do we do that? How do you do that? Well, one is to be friendly, also to be kind, and to share the good news of God's love. And so last week we talked about different ways that we can communicate with one another by phone, by text, by email. All of those are simply writing a note. Those are all ways that we communicate with one another and share the good news. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, help us to catch people by sharing the good news of your love with others. Amen. As we come together for our time of prayer, as you have concerns and uh, needs, please feel free to write to me, uh, give me a call, so that I am aware of what's going on in your life and the life of our church family. And so, at this time, let us pray. Loving God, we 
are here today because you have called us, invited us, and summoned us here. We are here not because we search for you, but rather because you searched for us, found us, claimed us, and gave us jobs to do in your kingdom. Sometimes we are amazed by your faith in us. There are times, too, when we think that we do not have the gifts or the abilities to do what you expect of us. Yet you have called us. Help us to have as much faith in ourselves as you have in us. Give us what we need to do your work. Loving God, we confess to you that we have been careless in our care of creation. We have been reluctant to speak your words of grace to our neighbors. We have judged others rather than forgiven. We have thought of ourselves also ignoring the needs around us. Forgive us. Give us eyes to see through the love of Jesus on the cross. Teach us to turn our hearts toward you, learning to live toward others in your grace, mercy, and love. Oh God, you know the needs of our people. We ask your blessings upon those that are sick and afflicted, and those that are hungry and homeless. We lift up all those that are caring for others, for those essential workers, from our doctors to those that simply collect our garbage. Oh God, we all are in your service. Help us to be your disciples. Give us strength and guidance. Oh God, bless our leaders as they take on the responsibilities to care for your people. Give them strength and guidance and your peace through these challenging times. Always, it is good to give you the thanks and praise both each and every day. And these and our other prayers we lift before you in the name of Jesus who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
send in their offering and give you thanks. And we also acknowledge those that have sent special contributions to, um, in memory of loved ones, in particular Marlene Fisher, uh, as well as our Human Relations Sunday. Uh, and so we give thanks for those offerings as well. And don't think that just because you didn't get it in this past week that uh, you can still submit it whenever. Because uh, we want to continue to recognize uh, our special Sundays. Uh, those gifts go to continue the work of justice and peace throughout the world, uh, as well as for scholarships for our students. And so don't think that uh, your gift doesn't count or go anywhere. It does. It means a lot, both now and always. And so let us pray and give thanks. Gracious God, your bounty is endless, and you provide everything we need for life and to do the ministry to which you have called us. We praise your abundance, which goes beyond whatever we could ask for. Grant that these gifts, tokens of our gratitude for all our blessings, be used in the healing of your work as a witness to the love you bear for all peoples. Amen. And now I want to introduce our guest speaker for today, the Reverend Evelyn Kent Clark, who is the District Superintendent for the South District. Uh, she has been a close colleague as all of our District Superintendents and Bishop and Connectional Ministries Director. Uh, I have worked closely with them and with her in particular through many years. And so it is a pleasure to introduce her to you now for our sermon today. I give praise to God and honor to Bishop Peggy Johnson, the cabinets and all the clergy and laity of the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference. I am Reverend Evelyn Kent Clark, District Superintendent of the Super South, where the people minister with faithfulness and service. I'm so happy to be with you and I'm grateful for God's presence with us, uniting us all over the conference through this cabinet sermon series. The sermon today is entitled, Called for Such a Time as This. I'm reading from the Old Testament in the New King James Version from the book of Esther, chapter four and verse 14. Probably a very familiar scripture to some of you. And it reads, for if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I'm also reading from the gospel according to Mark chapter 1 verses 14 to 20. Also in the New King James Version. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther from them, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in the boat mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went after him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Won't you pray with me? 
Oh God, we give you thanks for this moment, this day. We thank you, oh God, for the people who are, are sharing in this worship, in this sermon. Pray that you will speak, oh God, that your words will be clear, that we'll hide them in our hearts, and that, oh God, all that we do will give you honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I have often heard the phrase used, called for such a time as this. In fact, I probably used it myself on more than one occasion. But who knew such a time as this would come to us? And yet we, clergy and laity, have been called by God to proclaim the still living gospel in such a time as this. The proclamation of such a time as this is used when times are dire and arduous, when the strong, the bold, and those who take their stand at the front of the confrontation step forward. Those persons are called leaders for a reason. They lead when leadership is needed without hesitation. It's, it's, it's like it's in their DNA. But wait, those with the DNA to run to the front lines are not the only ones who receive the urgent message crying out such a time as this. It is the everyday, ordinary person who rarely leads, never runs to the front line, who questions why me and ask about what about those persons? who have the DNA of leadership. In both examples, which were highlighted in the Christian, in the scripture readings, the times were dangerous. The persons to whom the statements were directed, Esther and the fishermen, were persons who would probably wait for someone else to take the lead and maybe, just maybe, they would follow them. They were not the ones who would raise their voices to rally others. This is the whole point. There comes a time when those who are the ones on the sidelines or in the rear of the crowd are called to move forward for God, for righteousness, for peace, for justice. It is in this light that we find the text from Mark so poignant. It is at this time in time when the work of God had come under assault. Does that sound familiar? We understand that from the very beginning, Jesus started his public ministry in difficult times. John, Jesus' first cousin, who baptized Jesus and whose mission was to prepare the way for the coming Messiah, was imprisoned. The outspoken voice of God had been, if not silenced, at least quieted. Well, if John was imprisoned, who would speak? Jesus? Well, yes, but not alone. Jesus would need others to help and to prepare for the time when his voice would no longer be heard in the gathering places. Despite the fact that John is no longer the voice crying in the wilderness, the plan of God began to unfold right there in the midst of all the mess. For such a time as this, Jesus called his first disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Those regular men would share the ministry of proclaiming the gospel and continue to expand the ministry after Jesus had ascended into heaven. These common men, these, these, these ordinary people were fishermen. Seemingly, they were unprepared for the journey and work Jesus called them for. It would appear that there was a huge difference between the work they were called from and the work they were called to. They would no longer catch fish they would be fishers of people. 
Maybe the work wasn't so different after all. You know, just like discipleship, fishing is not a simple task. Have you ever watched the series River Monsters? The central character in the series is Jeremy Wade, who is referred to as an extreme angler. It was because of this series that I came to know a little bit about the complexities of fishing. The first thing about fishing has to do with context. One must be clear about what you're trying to catch. Fish lead very different lives. Some are saltwater dwellers and others live in freshwater. Some fish live in oceans while others live in lakes, rivers, and streams. The context dict dictates the type of equipment required to catch the fish. Ocean dwellers are usually large and strong fish and require heavy fishing rods and reels while fish found in lakes and rivers and streams don't need that. You must be knowledgeable about the setting and the environment in which you are fishing. It's the same with people. People live so many different lives. People live in different environments and contexts that not all types of personalities, attitudes, concerns, etc will make you an effective angler to catch men, women, boys, and girls in their particular places. In addition, the bait you use to catch your target fish is also very crucial. It all depends upon the type of the types of fish you want to catch. Flies, insects will catch some fish. Maybe worms will be better for other fish. For larger fish, you need meat or other fish of smaller sizes. It becomes more appealing to them. Fishermen have to be able to get that baited hook into the mouth of the fish. Just like disciples have to get the word of God into the hearts of people. Not every evangelistic approach or ministry plan will get the attention or interest of every person. We have to continue to try different approaches. The discipling person must get to know the concerns and needs and desires and problems or issues facing the persons with whom you are sharing the gospel. Get to know the people you're trying to reel in. It's all about relationship. I'm sure you've heard that before, but it warrants repeating. Get to know folks. Let them get to know you. Then you can find out better how to, to approach them and what bait to use. When Jesus came to John the Baptist at the Jordan, John told Jesus effectively, I've been waiting for you. It's time for you to take over. Sounds like John was tired. I hear disciples all over the connection saying they're tired. Oh, I'm giving up. It's time for the next person to take over. I'm tired. But this is not the time to give up. Jesus essentially told John, patience, my friend. It has to be this way for now. When you're doing the Lord's work, when you're fulfilling the call to be fishers of people, keep fishing and be patient. Anybody who loves fishing will tell you it takes a lot of patience to be a successful fisher person. These are perilous times. You know that. We are God's people called to accomplish the plan of God in these perilous times. Be an extreme angler. Your buildings may be closed, but you have been deployed to go out of the walls of your church and fish for people. Use every means you have to increase the kingdom. Bake the hook. 
People are hungry and searching. They're searching for food, natural food, but spiritual food. They're looking for help, connection, relationship, someone to talk to and someone who will listen. Use this time to increase your knowledge, plan and organize, read and study scripture. This is a different time, a time like we've never experienced before. Get ready for this new post-pandemic season. Change your community. That's what God's calling us for. Change the world. So now, let's get to it. Let's do it. Let's go fishing. Giving thanks to Reverend Clark, uh, let us now conclude our service with our benediction. As we go from this time of worship, May the merciful and compassionate God, very patient, full of faithful love, and willing not to destroy, teach us to open wide our arms to the world that God has created. Live into the image of God who loves while we were yet unrepentant, and cause us to love all the creatures, be all of God's creatures in this world, and be in connection with God, both now and always, and with one another. Amen. Go forth in peace. Stay safe. And may God continue to bless you this day and always. Amen.